right there. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to the regular scheduled council meeting for October 21st, 2019 at 7 p.m. Ms. Barner? Mayor Lowry? Here. Mr. Shammy? Here. Ms. Hopkins? Here. Ms. Eggleston? Here. Mr. Cobb? Here. Mr. Cook? Here. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Here. Seven members present. Thank you. We'll have tonight's invocation by Councilman Bill Cook. Oh, I forgot to say. I gotta break rules of count. Please bow our heads. Our Heavenly Father, please bestow upon this group tonight that we may be able to make all of the decisions that we made to the best of our ability. Please also bestow upon our first responders and keep everyone safe. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Need actions on the uh, work session for October 7th. Okay. I said in here. First and First, second. Second, Mr. all right. Vice Mayor. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Mr. Shammy. Yes. Ms. Hopkins. Yes. Um, work session abstain. You were not at the work session. Right. Abstain. <laughs> Ms. Eggleston. Yes. Mr. Cobb. Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Minutes accepted, 601. And moving on, we'll uh, action for uh, October 7th regular council meeting. So moved. Second. Ms. Hopkins? Yes. Ms. Eggleston? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Mr. Shammy? Yes. And it's accepted 7 0. All right, thank you very much. And communications. City Manager's report. Mr. Bridge. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council, members of the public. I'd like to share with you the City Manager report. And we'll start off with our finance discussion with uh, Debbie Watson. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Council, and residents. Um, I bring to you September's because your report says August by mistake. I didn't put in there September. So our the total revenue for the general fund for September was $20,010.66. The September total expenses just for the general fund is $57,752.40. Our year-to-date total revenue collected for the city is $4,828,310.15. And our year-to-date total expenses is four million ninety-four thousand eight hundred forty-one dollars and eight cents. If you have any questions, Council, any questions for the finance director? <coughs> Mr. Vice Mayor, Do we have the final numbers for the pool. Has all the bills been paid now? Yes, all the bills should have been paid by now. Um, the last report I gave you was close, except for the inventory. The inventory is the only thing we don't have on the final report. Okay, at thank you. Time, so. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Council? Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Do you, do you, how often do your eyes just go crossed looking at all this? I'm just curious. Often, often I have glasses now that have lines in them, and you know, I'm getting old, I guess. <coughs> well, thank you very much. You're okay. uh, before we go on, I would like to, on the last page of her report, we had an income tax collection report. Um, uh, from this time last year on our CCA collections, we are up 4.63%. <coughs> and with the state of Ohio collection on net profit tax, we are up 212%. So I want to make sure council is very aware of that last page and that thing. We are up overall in our income tax collections, which is a very good sign for our ending year this year and our 2020 budget next year. Thank you, Ms. Watson. And uh, moving on with the city manager report is a service report with Mr. Howard Kitko. Thank you, Mr. Bridge, mayor, members of council, members of the public. We'll start off with our service departments. Um, again, I uh, reported uh, we're still working on some minor road repairs and we've got a few more left to do. We've been starting to try and get some of our winter equipment ready. 
uh, you get ready for fall leaf season. Storm drains on Main Street, you'll see they have orange cones in them. I'm still working on estimates Sorry, to get those replaced. And as time goes on, we are seeing more and more go because those are old brick uh, stack structures. Those aren't concrete structures like uh, today's standard. <coughs> Leaf pickup season uh, begins October 28th. No, the flyer uh, dates and map is on our city webpage. It's also on our Facebook page. Um, we have copies of the flyer up at the link also. Uh, to come to trail overgrowth, um, it's supposed to be boom, or boom mode here sometime soon. However, I've just been keeping in contact with the county. They are swamped. Uh, but they're getting ready for winter stuff now. So if we don't get it this fall, we'll definitely get it in the uh, spring. Um, I do know ODOT is looking to purchase a, a boom arm mower also. I spoke with one of their um, <coughs> their agency, and I might also try to put them also on our list to be able to contact for some assistance with this type of work. We don't do enough to put get one ourselves, um, so it's easy to use one of the other government agencies to help us out with that. 2018, 19 various road projects, Galewood Drive reconstruction project. Uh, the reconstruction has been complete. TC Holzman completed the project for $306,219.50. New Cornell Street levy share was reduced from the original budget amount of $41,400 to $30,673.81. So we saved approximately $11,000, $1,200. Um, with that project uh, and it was basically by not doing some full death repair and not using some of the items that we that you budget for for just in case emergencies uh, street resurfacing project of hemlock butternut and bittersweet uh, of course it's been complete for some time that was done in the late spring that cost that uh, we got final billing that cost to complete was reduced from forty five thousand four hundred twenty dollars and sixty six cents to thirty seven thousand dollars $37,889.91, and that was due to not having um, to do any full depth repair with their mill machine, so that cut us some cost. We did go over on asphalt, so which is good. I can always handle a little more asphalt thickness. On to the 19 wastewater plant inflow building upgrade. Uh, Peterson Construction was awarded a contract. The new pump is to be delivered early November, uh, sometime around the 4th. And the bar screen is to be delivered uh, sometime around early December, not sure of an exact date yet. And that equipment will be installed in late December. Uh, they are working with the city of Dayton right now on a project they got going on and trying to get us in sometime mid-December. 2019-2020, uh, because the primary clarifier project is going to move into 2020, uh, demolition and installation of a new clarifier uh, being primary number one in the existing concrete structure. Uh, the ordinance is in front of council tonight to allow the city manager um, to, well, I on my part, to proceed with the project. Uh, currently, we are finalizing the payment of the project, which could be um, cash and or a combination of some uh, financing. Traffic signal upgrade project. That project was awarded to Banzel Construction Company. They have done work on behalf of the city and ODOT with some of the previous street lighting. Um, construction is to be completed by 831.20, and as I get updates, I will pass those along. And that is it for my report, and I can entertain questions off the report or anything else that council may have. Thank you, sir. Mr. Cobb. Mr. Kiko, you, you're talking about getting estimates to replace these uh, manhole cover or the build up of the manhole cover? Uh, the whole structure. From the ground up? Underneath, yeah, the whole thing. Okay. Why can't the city employees do this? Uh, we honestly do not have the time to excavate the full area, put a 2A ODOT structure in, and redo everything because a lot of those brickwork, we don't have time because they're going to also be getting into brick pavers, concrete curb, asphalt. There's eight inches of concrete outside of those structures also. We don't have time, and I think I got seven of them to do. He's in a little complex of a job for our guy. Thank you, Mr. Cobb. Council, anyone else? Mr. Kitko, I just had one. I just actually noticed this today. I know I've talked a lot about the curbs on Main, and we'll save that discussion for when we get into next year's budget and whatnot. But um, when I stopped in the city building today, the curb across the street that is almost a ramp, 
Is That's that part of the in the, my report about the con, uh, concrete uh, repair and stuff. Okay, great. So, alrighty. Anyone else? Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Kitko. Moving on with the city manager report, uh, our fire report with our fire chief, chief trustee. Mayor, vice mayor, council, and citizens. For the month of September, the New Kalaw Fire Division responded to 87 EMS calls in the city, 17 EMS calls in Elizabeth Township. The division responded to 11 fire-related calls in the city and one in Elizabeth Township, bringing our total run volume to date of 983 runs in the city. We had four EMS calls answered by mutual aid, either by Pike Township or Bethel Clark Township due to Medic 52 being on a response. We answered three mutual aid EMS runs for Pike Township and two EMS runs for Bethel Clark. In the month of September, the division responded to three overdose calls. Uh, five out of the eight new hire personnel that we hired are out of training and on shift work at this time. Any questions other than that? Council, any? Thing for Chief. Chief, glad to see you here today. How you feeling? Better. All's Better. well? Good. Glad to, glad to hear it. Thank you very much for the report, sir. Any questions? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, thank you, Chief Trustee. Moving on with the City Manager Report, our uh, Police Administrator, Sergeant Underwood. Thank you, City Manager, Mayor, folks in the office, and the audience here. New Carlisle deputies were dispatched to 33 calls in September. Those calls were broke down as assault. We had one. Domestic violence, there was nine. Theft, there was two. Non-injury crashes, two. Injury crashes, none. Citations, 13. Drug complaint, one. Overdose, two. Suicide attempt, one. And burglary, we had none. Um, that was, September was a good month for us. With the ongoing drug problems, it seems as though the Clark County Sheriff's Department is always investigating someone that is abusing or selling some type of drugs. This is not a unique problem. Drug abuse is nationwide. Our new crowd deputies are constantly informing the Sheriff's Office of locations with potential drug problems, and that's working very well. The Sheriff's Investigating Unit is making arrests in and around New Carlisle weekly, or if not more. Then it's this time of year, the homeless people in our community are going to start looking for a warm place to spend the night. Please let our deputies handle the homeless. We can get names, check for warrants, and maybe get them some help. And Saturday, November 2, Tecumseh High School is having a drug take back day at the high school from 10A to 2P. And this is real important here. I just can't express enough here. I want to say thank you to all those who helped make the heritage, heritage of flight uh, a success. And this is, this, I'm just being honest, some amazing people donated a, ter a tremendous amount of time for you in the city. Uh, I didn't hear of any glitches. We were rushing around from time to time. Uh, but for a festival that size, it, it went very well. And a lot of your council members uh, put a lot of time in that. And again, contact the Clark County Sheriff's Office at 937-328-2560 if you witness anything suspicious. This could be the phone call we need to solve a crime or maybe even <coughs> save a life. And with that, I'll entertain any questions if we have any. Council, anything for Sergeant Underwood? <clears throat> Sarge, I just uh, wanted to tell you thank you as well for you and all the deputies who were there uh, making sure the festival were in, and the Chief Trustee to your guys as well. You guys both uh, kept us safe and kept things as organized as they could for the size of crowds we had. But, uh, you know, we always bump into a few little hiccups here and there, but overall it was, I think, pretty smooth for the most part. So thank you to both of you and everyone on your teams. Thank you. I'll relay that back to them. Sir, thank you. Thank you, Sergeant Underwood. And moving on with the city manager report under informational items, new building update. I'm still getting a quote for the possible abatement removal. I know it's ongoing from last meeting. Um, the something new I can't add to that for the new building update. I did set a meeting uh, for them for the with the architects on Wednesday, um, and hopefully I can get a chance to discuss this possible abatement removal. 
um, but I'm actually going to be going and reviewing some renderings of the building. So um, after Wednesday, um, I'll get some renderings. Uh, they may have to touch some things up, uh, but we'll start uh, here very shortly to have visuals of what our new building is going to look like, and that I'm very excited about. Um, but I still don't have a quote on uh, the possible abatement of the asbestos on the second floor where the administrative offices are going to be. Uh, Sunshine Law Training, I will be attending with Councilwoman Eggleston on Thursday, October 24th, and that is in Urbana, Ohio. I do believe it starts at 9 a.m. Uh, 2024 Capital Improvement Plan, that was under for last, um, from last meeting that we did update when it was going to be uh, presented to Council. So right now it's either the first or second meeting in November. We will have something to you guys. Again, upcoming liability insurance renew renewal. It says emergency ordinance possible. We will be breaking rules of council tonight to introduce an ordinance so it does not have to be an emergency ordinance. We can do a regular read on November 4th. And again, I am happy to report that we've seen, uh, again, for the third year in a row, a, a significant savings on that annual premium. Uh, BSIS, I'm still working on that, and that would be sent out to, um, to the respective organization here by the end of the week. Um, I was out sick last week for a lot of it, so I don't have much to add on to it. So if you have any questions, I would be uh, happy to entertain them. Council. Mr. Bridge, can you go over that number one more time? The uh, the year over the past, which you said it in the first meeting. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Just the, um, the, yeah. the whole number? Yep. Since 2017, uh, we've done a good job at watching how many claims we have in our insurance and just being super safe with what we're doing. And I am happy to report since 2017, we have saved uh, about $22,260 in insurance premiums. Um, so yeah, this year it was, re was reduced uh, $4,4600, last year it was reduced $1,400, and the year before that it was reduced $16,000. So we've had, uh, we've had some success with our operations in the company that we work with. So just another piece of the block that you and the administration side of the house and of course council sure. is chipping away at things and, and creative ways to save money that you wouldn't think that we'd do if you were to read social media. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but thank you very much. No, thank you. And that's all I have for the city manager report. All right. Any other questions for Mr. Bridge? <clears throat> all righty. Thank you very much, sir. All right. Communications. Uh, uh, yeah, com I'm sorry. Comments from members of the public. Anybody have any questions or comments tonight? Please go to the podium, name and address. All right, moving on. Any reports? None. Dropping down to resolutions. Mr. Berner. Okay. Resolution 19-16R public hearing and action tonight. A resolution accepting the 2020 official certificate of estimated resources along with the tax year 2020 rates and amounts certification from the Clark County Budget Commission. Mr. Vice Mayor. Move to accept resolution 1916R. Second. Ms. Hopkins. Okay. <coughs> uh, an explanation of this resolution, this is the first step in our 2020 budget process uh, that we accept the rates that the auditors give us. Council, any questions? <coughs> when you're ready, please. Okay. Ms. Eggleston? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Mr. Shammy? Yes. Ms. Hopkins? Yes. Motion accepted 7 0. Moving on, Resolution 19-17R, Public Hearing and Action tonight. A resolution amending Resolution 18-14R and 19-04R, the Capital Improvement Program for the City of New Carlisle, Ohio. Council. Mr. Mayor, move to accept Resolution 19-17R. Uh, Thanks. And an explanation of this ordinance, this is to amend our CIP, to purchase new vehicles, and to also uh, amend some other things that were discussed at a operating budget work session in February. <clears throat> Council, any questions on this? When you're ready, ma'am. Ms. Hopkins? Yes. Ms. Eggleston? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Mr. Shammy. Yes. Motion accepted 7 0. Ordinances 4 for introduction, 2 with action tonight. Okay. Ordinance 19 
31E, Introduction Public Hearing and Action Tonight, and Ordinance authorizing the City Manager to enter into a contract for the purchase of a new ambulance and declaring an emergency. Council. So moved. Don't be shy. <laughs> In an explanation of this ordinance, this is uh, to allow me to go ahead and go forward with the purchase of buying a new medic in cash. We are not financing it thanks to a uh, levy that was passed by our generous citizens uh, for me to expend not to exceed $220,000 for purchase of a brand new medic. I just had one quick Yeah. Was you good? I'm sorry? No, I, was, I thought you were done. No, I'm good. You want to ask him the question that we discussed earlier? I was just going to ask Chief one quick question. Mm -hmm. I'll get, uh, how old is our, our first, the medic we're current, main medic we're using? Okay, I was just curious how long we were getting out of it. Thank you. Mr. Cowell? 2012. Okay, thank God. 12. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <coughs> Mr. Cobb? Go ahead. Uh, no, no, I'm just. Chief I'm just is that going to have the automatic cot loader? What we're saying is we will reverse it this year, and what we're planning on is buying the medic out of this year's funds and buying the low system out of next year's funds. Because we're buying the medic, purchasing the medic now, we still not going to see the medic until April or May of next year for the build time. And by that, that way, we'll allow us to go ahead and purchase that low system and have the top shipping for on and reinstall so when the medic comes in, we'll basically get what are we talking on the price on that? The low system, the cotton loan is 21000 the low system is 30000 I can't say anything because there's a motion on the board. It's, it's not cheap. You good, Mr. Cobb? Yep. Thank you, sir. Mr. Shannon. For Mr. Bridge, do you think possibly we can... You know, use that old medic, put a plow in it, make an ice cream truck. Ice cream truck? <laughs> oh, someone had brought up the possibility of reusing it, and I was going to meet with the uh, fire chief about it. More, uh, more city revenue. Save for an ice cream truck. You're going you're gonna to drive that ice cream truck? I'll just park it in front of the pool or somewhere. Or <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, chief, a question did come up, and I didn't want to answer it. I think I know the answer, but I didn't want to put myself out there. Uh, when we purchase the new medic, as it is from the purchase agreement, that includes all the lights and stenciling and all that. The lights and stencils and all that. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it is out the door with the lights and all the new Carlisle yeah, we, we stuff. We decided to go with Ron, and uh, since we did take cash, uh, we uh, uh, are paying cash for it. We got a discount, so we put that discount back over into the graphics. Uh, and that way, when it comes to the door, it's already done. Yeah. Great. Any other questions, Council? Thank you very much. When you're Oh, Mr. Vice Mayor, sorry. The uh, cop, the auto of the cop, said the medic won't be here, you said, till March or April. April or May. So there's no reason to purchase that now because no, I think no. that might have been where Mr. Uh, Todd was going. The last thing that they do okay. to the medic when it comes offline. So that could be put into the CIP line for that? Oh, it has to be for 2020, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? <clears throat> All right. When you're ready, Ms. Burner. Okay. Ms. Hopkins. Yes. Ms. Eggleston. Yes. Mr. Cobb. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Mm -hmm. Emergency. Yes. <laughs> Mayor Lowry. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Shammy. Yes. Motion accepted. Seven zero. Moving on to Ordinance 19-32E. Ms. Burner, just one second. Did you have something, Mr. Cobb? Yes, I want to. I think we serve. I know what you what you said is pretty much right. But what I want to try to do is see if there's some way we can come up with the money. Once that squad is done, we can pay to have that self-loading cop put in there. Oh, that's what we're doing. Now, that's what we're doing. Because I, I hate to see somebody hurt the back. Uh, when, it, when it's delivered, when we pick it up from the bronze, it'll already be installed. All we have to do is pay for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what I wanted to make sure of. Mm -hmm. So you don't want us to get it and then go back and have to put it right, at, right, gotcha. Right. Yeah, it'll all be done before we even drive it. Thank you, Mr. Cobb. Sorry about that, Ms. Burner, when you're ready. Okay. 
Ordinance 19-32E, Introduction Public Hearing and Action tonight, and Ordinance authorizing the City Manager to purchase, demo, and install one primary clarifier for the wastewater treatment plant and declaring an emergency. So moved. Second. Was that Mr. Cobb and Mrs. Hopkins? Yep. Yes. And an explanation of this ordinance, this was discussed at our uh, previous meeting and then briefly today at our work session, our primary clarifier has went down in our wastewater plant. Uh, we need to get that replaced. This uh, legislation is the first step in doing that to allow me to proceed with the project. <clears throat> Thank you for clarifying. <laughs> Did you get it? Just now. Count any questions? <laughs> you need clarification on anything? No. When you're ready. All the clarifications that we need now. Yes, we're clear. Ms. Eggleston. <coughs> yes. Mr. Cobb. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Mr. Shammy. Yes. Ms. Hopkins. Yes. Motion accepted 7-0. Moving on, Ordinance 19-33, Introduction Tonight, Public Hearing and Action on 11-4-19, and Ordinance Supplementing Certain Appropriations in New Carlisle City, Ordinance 19-04. Ordinance 19-34, Introduction Tonight, Public Hearing and Action on 11-4-19 and ordinance providing for the transfer of funds from the general fund to the street and cemetery fund of the city of New Carlisle. All right, and before we move down to other business, we're gonna need a motion to break rules to uh, get ordinance 19-35. Move up. Make a motion we break the rules. Second. Huh? Either. We'll need a second from somebody. Second. Yeah, second. So we'll call it uh, Mr. Cobb. Was the was the first? First. It was about second. the same time. Is Mr. Shammy? Break rules. Break rules of council to read um, ordinance 19-35. Right. Introduction tonight. Public hearing on 11-4-19. And ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract for liability insurance with USI Insurance Services LLC representing the public entity's pool of Ohio for the administration of said policy. Uh, Mr. Bridge, you need to go over anything on this? On that, I'll, that's, I'll, let me explain it. Uh, if you'd like, sure. Yep. Um, we um, wanted to get this on for the agenda um, Friday, but we unfortunately got the renewal information this morning. So I don't want to have another emergency ordinance, and that's what would have happened if we would have not broken the rules of council tonight with this. So basically, we introduce it tonight, like uh, the 1933 and 34, and then it gets voted on next week. But it has to do with the liability insurance that we briefly discussed um, about the cost savings we've had with, over the past three years. Thank you. Council, anything? Ms. Berner, when you're ready, please. Um, I didn't, you guys, I didn't call the vote for your... Not for breaking the rules, then. No. Right. Right. So you want to, yeah. Yeah, that's what I was thinking you were going to do. No, I just was thinking, all right, which paper do I have to read? <laughs> Sorry. Um, Ms. Hopkins? Yes. Ms. Eggleston? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Mr. Yes. Shammy? Yes. Should I reread it again then? No, you're fine. You're good. Okay. So, good? Yep, we're right. good. Other business? Uh, do what? <laughs> do something. Right. Um, also, um, Mr. Bridge, I asked you, uh, under, now we're under other business real quick. Uh, Ms. Eggleston was asking about getting the word out for applicants for the uh, Parks and Rec Board. So I didn't know if we could get that moving. And, yeah. and then once we get some applicants, we can put it on the agenda to approve those applicants when we get those in. So Sure. Great. I'll put a posting on Facebook, and I think that's how we do it and see what we get. And then I'll just put it on the city manager report, and you guys can approve it in one swipe. Okay. Uh, Mr. Cobb. We don't have anybody on Parks and Rec. There's two members. Oh, had Mrs. Wright and, uh, Mrs. Wright's still on there, Mrs. Mullet's still on there, and then Mrs. McKenzie, when she got elected council, she had to forfeit her seat, right. but then she never got back on. 
So I think there's, I think it's a five person board. Um, it's not three paid people, is it? I think it's five. So there's some vacancies on it again. Three is a four. Three is a four, so they need one number. <coughs> so Ms. we're leasing to get one more so they can be operational. You want me to read the other business? Sure, if you're yeah. ready, please. Congressman Thank you. Warren Davidson will hold his mobile office hours at the city building on the fourth Tuesday of each month from 1.30 p.m. until 2. Thank you. Uh, I also just want to let everyone know we just got this uh, figured out today. Uh, since New Kalau moved trick-or-treat to this coming Saturday from 6 to 8, uh, after trick-or-treat at 8.30 here at the park down by where the stage is, we're going to put up the, uh, the big 18-foot by 11-foot screen and play. Uh, it's a... It's, a, it's the Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown, at 8.30, so uh, after trick-or-treat, if you have any little ones that want to come and watch that, it'll be free here at the park. Mr. Cobb. Mr. Bruce, mm -hmm. have we uh, <coughs> got extra deputies coming in for Saturday evening? Uh, I'll have to check on that. I know they were working on that. Yes. Do you, know, you have any update on that, Sergeant Underwood, extra duty for trick-or-treat? Yeah, all four deputies will be up here, and, and uh, at plus an additional deputy. Okay. Yeah. Five. So all four and plus an additional. Good. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I'll, I'll put that on Facebook, the uh, free movie night. Okay, great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else before we move on? Administration, anything? No. Audience? Mm -hmm. Cameraman? Candidate. Candidate night. Uh, Ms. Eggleston, did you want to mention that? Uh, meet the candidate night would be next Monday, the 28th here at the Shelter House. It is hosted by Mr. Daryl Bauer. Thank you very much. <coughs> Anything else? All right. And? Seven. And I Probably not. <laughs> Ms. Hopkins, did you have something? Yes, I planned to attend that night. You so do? I needed okay. to tell somebody. <clears throat> All right. And last but not least, Move to adjourn. Thanks.